and uh, coming to pulmonary artery hypertension diagnosis uh, this um, algorithm that has been uh, suggested by the 2022 guidelines uh, so if a patient comes with a typical history symptoms or signs or any lab test suggestive of pulmonary hypertension or this, then patient has to be subject to echo if the echocardiogram shows a low probability of pulmonary hypertension and you can consider other causes of these symptoms. But you have patients with intermediate or high um, probability. So these patients, what the advice is, you have to go for a fast track referral, particularly in patients with the high suspicion of pulmonary hypertension. So to an expert, cardiac center. That's why it's given the bottom of the algorithm. And uh, the next thing is you can consider a VQ scan because the next common uh, condition is you have to rule out a chronic pulmonary thromboembolism. Um, VQ scan is the uh, investigation of choice to rule out the um, chronic pulmonary thromboembolism. Uh, so when you have an abnormal VQ scan, yes, you have to refer to the expert center. If you don't have an abnormal VQ scan, then you have to consider other conditions like left heart disease or lung diseases. So that's the algorithm. So apart from echo, ECG, in echo, we assess the right ventricular systolic pressure, the right ventricular dimensions, whether it's just dilated, RA dilatation, or you can even roll out a left heart disease, which could be the reason for the elevated pulmonary artery pressure. And the pulmonary function test, radiological tests, CT scan, particularly HRCT, the, sometimes you can use a polysomnography, these are all used to identify the cause for the pulmonary hypertension. And VQ scan, as I said, it is very important to exclude chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. And uh, regarding the um, right heart catheterization, that's another investigation, uh, which we don't do in all the patients, but in selective patients, we do right heart catheterization. This is to confirm the diagnosis sometimes, but now we have other diagnostic modality to confirm the diagnosis, but still, Sometimes you may have to use a right heart cath. You can uh, check the left filling pressures. And uh, another important thing is the vasoreactivity testing. What is vasoreactivity testing? The vasoreactivity testing is to find out whether the patient would respond to our vasodilatory treatment, patients with pulmonary hypertension. So, but what is the problem with uh, this vasoreactivity testing is all patients with pulmonary hypertension do not show positive result in vasoreactivity testing. Only 10 to 15% of the patients with the pulmonary hypertension do show some uh, positive vasoreactivity testing. It is done in the catheterization laboratory. And out of this 10 to 15%, only half of them do really respond to vasodilatory therapy. The reason is being that vasoreactivity test becomes positive only in patients with the early disease or milder form of the disease. But that is also very important because we can intervene in the early stage of the disease. Now, other tests like HIV, LFTs, ANA, TSH, drug screen can be done in patients with pulmonary hypertension to find out the real etiology of this pulmonary hypertension. What is right heart catheterization? Here we send a catheter, a pressure catheter, uh, through the inferior vena cava or the superior vena cava and into the right atrium and from the right atrium the catheter goes into the right ventricle and then into the pulmonary artery. So we can measure the uh, pressures uh, in the pulmonary artery, in the right ventricle and in the right atrium. The right side shows the pressure trace in uh, various chambers. The right atrium which shows around, normally the pressure is around 0 to 8 millimeter of mercury. In, uh, in the right ventricle it is around uh, systolic being 30 the diastolic being deep diastolic in 0 to 10. And the, the next one is the pulmonary artery pressure. So the mean pulmonary artery pressure uh, should be around 15 millimeter of mercury. The, the next one is the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is around 10 to 12 millimeter of mercury. So we, to easily and uh, remember this, we in our student days, how we were been taught is 10, 20, and 30. 10 is the uh, pulmonary artery diastolic pressure. 20 is the mean pressure and 30 is the systolic pressure. So that is easy way to remember uh, 10, 20 and 30. But now it is no more 20, we bring it down to 15. 
Now we have uh, the guidelines, uh, 2022 guidelines also recommends aggressive screening for high risk populations of pulmonary hypertension. That means in patients who are asymptomatic. So you have a patient with connective tissue disorder, but they may not have uh, any symptoms suggestive of pulmonary hypertension. Or you can have a patient with congenital heart disease without any evidence of pulmonary hypertension. And the third one is the portal hypertension, where portal hypertension eventually leads to pulmonary hypertension. So in these patients, the pulmonary hypertension may not be evident or not be, these patients may not be symptomatic. In these patients, you should routinely subject these patients for echocardiogram or if necessary, a right heart catheterization also to detect pulmonary hypertension at an early, early stage, even though the patient is asymptomatic.